Best Picks of the Week. I have been flirting with the idea of creating a Hackintosh for a couple of years now. Uh, I've always been fascinated by the entire concept behind running it on Windows, uh, running it on a PC, I should say. Uh, and I finally took the time on Monday and I created a Hackintosh. I built my first Hackintosh. I used all my existing hardware that I already had for my Windows machine. I'm running an i7 CPU. I have an Asus motherboard. I'm running the Blackmagic capture card. I'm running an NVIDIA 2600 uh, video card. So some of this stuff is supported. Some really isn't. It is, but it's not. And the way I was able to do it was via this website. And, and they, they do a great job at explaining how to do pretty much everything you want to do with a Hackintosh down to even buying the hardware where you buy from. They have a great form. It's called TonyMacX86.com. And they have everything here. So you could go to customize, guide, hardware tips, updates, video. They also have a forum here. Uh, and they give you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to create a Hackintosh. The Hackintosh took about about an hour to put together as far as installing uh, creating the disc because you got to you got to create that install disc a little differently because it has to be bootable uh, creating this partitioning the drive uh, and installing and having everything working perfectly it took about an hour I have been running this machine here to my side I don't have it on camera but it's using Wirecast as my encoding box and I'm running Mac because it does a better job on the Mac than Windows um, it took about an hour to put together. I had to do some minor tweaks to the drivers to get that working properly. And it's been running for about a week since Monday with no crashes, nothing is wrong with it. And it's running seamlessly. And I'm blown away at how well this thing runs. I didn't expect it to run this smoothly considering I don't even have you know all the supported hardware needed. But not, not even a hiccup, which is mind blowing. Awesome. I'm surprised too, just to hear you talk about it. Cause I, I don't know why, but for some reason, I thought that Snow Leopard is the version that maxed out on uh, Hackintoshes. So I, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that you can do it with a uh, mountain line and that it works just fine. Was it hard to know whether your specific PC hardware, did you have to buy special hardware? Or what? I did, did not, just... I did not have to buy the hardware. Coincidentally, all the hardware that I was using worked perfectly uh, on this. Now there's a guide. Have... There's a guy that's only certain, you know, not every, every, you know, motherboard is compatible, obviously. Most are at this point. Uh, Suncast, do you remember what that file was that we needed to get? The DSDT? Yeah, there's a DSDT file. And the DSDT so optimizes the performance. Their website actually has uh, a bunch of motherboards and DSDT t files for most of them. But not every single motherboard is, of course, popular. And if you don't have a popular board... Uh, like Andrew does, the Asus isn't necessarily popular among Hackintosh builders. You kind of have to build your own. I did not, by the way, I did not have to build my own. And uh, it worked out, the, you know, automatically it just worked. Everything was working perfectly fine and I've had no issues. Now, I'm not saying you you may have issues, you may not. But for How me, about the, graf gra yeah, about the graphics card, did automatic, you have to automatically it saw it. But was it was it a graphics card, though, that is in use on products that Apple sells? Because I think that used to be the case is that you had to have the same kind of thing that Apple built their own driver for. No, it's a GT. It's an NVIDIA GTX uh, 260. They, they do generally recommend going with uh, Gigabyte and NVIDIA uh, hardware. Yeah. So the and, and NVIDIA so hardware works, obviously, because it's unified uh, drivers. But the Asus motherboard that I have, there's some of them that work and some don't i i would recommend going with a gigabit because they apparently work the best but ev all the features on mine work perfectly fine so like for the graphics card where did that driver come from it ought, i didn't have to do anything when i installed lion it saw it it says uh you know it says video card gtx 260 nvidia oh <laughs> so, so so it kind of sounds like it's an apple supplied driver then That's I, I guess I, it's amazing how easy this has become because i remember the early days of of creating a hackintosh and i had a couple friends that did it uh, i was with amd at that point so i never really uh played around with it but i remember they would tell me horror stories about things not working right uh you couldn't use your apple id uh with itunes you couldn't do updates by the way my i could log into the app store the app store works perfectly fine apple id takes it i could all my apps are on there now that i have on my mac uh so everything works wow 
iTunes works, updates work. Uh, it, it's mind blowing how well this is, how good this has become. Well, it would be really interesting to see if this is just temporary. Like, has Apple just not gotten around yet to patching Mountain Lion so it can't be used this way? You know, I, or, uh, or 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 have they really changed their philosophy and thought, well, hey, if a couple of users sneak in and do this, who cares? It's it's only one percent anyway. Well, we we discussed this on What the Tech with Paul, and we played this concept of, well, what if this is their way of kind of saying, hey, listen, go ahead and do it, because maybe in a couple of years they're gonna they're gonna light they're gonna allow everybody to install this. They might turn around and open it up and. And the, the whole discussion sprung from the fact that if Apple were to do it at any point, man, this is the time to do it. Because Windows 8, who knows what people are going to think of it. People really don't have an option at this point other than just staying with Windows 7. So how do you, what do you do if everybody hates Windows 8? You release OS 10 and you say, you know what? Uh, starting now, it's available for all PCs. And then what happens? So it, it brought up a very interesting discussion on that on on what the tech on Wednesday on on Tuesday on if this is something that they would ever do. You know, it's a it's not the Steve Jobs uh, Apple that we knew of. A lot of things are different, and this may be something that Apple might possibly do in the future because it runs so good. I mean, it's it's so smooth where I can't even dis explain. I I'm sounding like a fanboy at this point, but <laughs> I'm just, it's not that, that uh, the, the operating system, I love every aspect of it, but I'm just so surprised on how well it's working. Yeah, no, me too. I mean, I, I also heard horror stories through the years about, about Hackintoshes that then break with the next software update or something. E even when, remember Psystar, uh, that company that was, that got in big trouble and did eventually get sued and shut down for selling, yeah. for, for selling Mac clones. Uh, even they had a whole thing about what to do about how not how to wait to. Didn't they say on their webpage like, "Don't install an Apple software update. Wait for our version, then we'll give it to you." I remember there was something like that, and there was some weird thing where uh, if you. But you know what it was? I think I think at that time it was that they you couldn't you could only do it if you bought you know the hundred dollar version of the full version of the operating system. It was some weird technicality like that, and they didn't have OEM rights. It was some weird thing, but now. I, you know what? It's a, it's such a small portion that's doing this right now, but I'm amazed that they've been able to kind of hack this together where it works and all the drivers work. Uh, there's something also on this website. Uh, it's called, I'll tell you right now, what was that update that they did? Uh, Suncast. Unibeast. Which update? Not Unibeast. Unibeast? Uh, no, it wasn't Unibeast. Multibeast? Uni yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it, it's all like the drivers and everything in there, so you could click. I, I'm even using PC2, PS2 uh, keyboards on this, and they've dropped support for PS2 har uh, <laughs> PS2 yeah, there's hardware. Been, there's Unibeast, which is what you normally use to help install the uh, the Mac OS X image to a USB stick to install. It. And then there's multi multi which multi is what you normally That's it. use after you install the operating system to tweak it. Yeah, so what you do, you install this thing called Multibeast, and you're able to add all these driver supports in there. So you could say, oh, okay, I want to use onboard audio. I want to use this. I want to use this driver. And they, they kind of put together drivers that work well with OS X. That's great. Yeah. And, and for people who are starting from scratch and don't already have a Windows PC to install this on, does the site provide like a, a current updated guide about like what components work the best? Yeah, they do a great yeah. job at that. And they have I, a great I've support system. I've been researching this uh, for the past week because I'm actually looking into building a Hackintosh myself. And they have updated guides for 2012 that recommend a whole bunch of equipment. They even have this setup where you have a budget line of uh, hardware. And it gives you several options for what you can even do in that budget line as far as uh, what motherboard, what um, video card you would want to do to, depending on what your needs are. They have a pro line. If you want to do something that's similar to what a Mech Pro would be in 2012, they recommend that you can go with these sort of parts. And then they also give you a list of every single uh, recommended hardware that they think works best. As far as I understand it, Tony Mack and, and his team actually test these uh, hardware profiles to see which one is the most stable. That's fantastic. I'll build yeah. my own Mac Pro with USB 3.0 and Thunderbolt screw. I know, Apple, I know. Isn't that, isn't that insane? I mean, <laughs> they even go down and run through some accessories you want to get. Even Wi Fi works. And that's a big thing with Hackintosh is that in the past, Wi Fi cards haven't worked that well. They found one now that works pretty well. Man, I'm not waiting until 2013 for a Mac Pro update. I'm, I'm building this thing now. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. can. And for a fraction of the cost, it, it's <laughs> insane how it, it works. 
you know, there's still going to be some hiccups. I, I know a lot of people right now, my, my sound card drivers are now working 100%, but I'm not even using it. I'm using the Blackmagic capture card as my sound card because it has a sound card built in. That works perfectly fine. So for me, I was able to get around that. But there, I mean, there's a little things here and there. But if I spent another hour on this, which I haven't, if I spent another hour, I could definitely work it the way I want it to work. And the thing is a beast. It's super, super fast. I even overclocked it. I got a little cocky and I overclocked <laughs> it. And the temperature, I'm looking at the temperature right now. So we're streaming. We're using this as the encoding box. Um, thanks. You're have like a, there's, a, there's now a light going off on like a, on a map of yeah. the world in Apple HQ saying, uh-oh, someone's running faster than any Mac Pros available for sale. You know, I thought that when I put in my Apple ID in the App Store, I was like, well, they just got the ping. The Apple yep. police are going <laughs> to knock at my door and confiscate my computer. But I'm looking at it. My CPU is running at about 60 Celsius. But my CPU, I'm streaming to five CDNs and recording. It's at 80%. <laughs> All the cores are maxed out. Using virtually no memory. You know what's amazing on this? The memory usage is so much lower than on my MacBook Pro. I find that funny. It, it does a better mean- job at... Uh, not uh, when I was playing around with like in Firefox for whatever reason, well, I don't know if it's a component and it might be that I have a little bit more RAM in this, but I don't have as much memory leak as I do on my MacBook. Leak meaning like memory that sticks around and yeah. even after you close the application. Yeah. Like Firefox is notorious for taking up a lot of memory. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, that's my pick. Uh, if you guys are interested and you want to read up on this, by the way, AMD guys, you could still do it via AMD. It's possible. It's a little bit more of a wor- of a of a workaround, but it could be done on an AMD. Uh, you you gotta, save much on what? Uh, on the cost of the CPU on on an AMD machine? Yeah. Uh yeah, they could save a lot, but I I personally oh. wouldn't recommend it. I don't I don't recommend I you recommend go with an either. AMD. Uh, yeah. it, it's very it, it's it's a little bit more of a difficult. It's going to be a lot more more uh, hacking tentacle. Yeah. Involved in setting it up. I mean, I think you even have to modify the BIOS to the motherboard. That's a whole thing. Yeah. But if, you, if you're if you interested in this, go to TonyMacX86.com. A uh, really nice layout to the site. Really uh, informative. And they have a great forum. So if you have a question, you could always go in the forum and ask your question there. And that is my pick of the week, guys. What do you think? 